So I, I really appreciate that, and uh, I hope you you all enjoyed it. And I hope I know Katrina's online, so I hope Katrina enjoyed seeing it. So uh, we do have a few more Safecast stories. So I'm just going to go straight to one more story before we, we get into our, our wrap up, and there's a, there might be a couple more during during the last half hour. Or so so we are we are very unfortunately out to leave. So we are now on my slightly ropey. Um, internet connection in Northern Scotland. So wish me luck as I try to share one of these videos. So here we go. Hi everybody. My name is Jesus Peña Rodriguez from Colombia. I am doing my PhD in physics in the area of myography. I became a site caster in 2017 when I traveled to Trieste to take part of the workshop on environmental mapping. In this workshop, we learn to construct the big Kagan nano detector and analyze the data. One of my favorite measurements using this detector is the study of cosmic radiation in air clocks. We carry out an experiment in two folds. One measurement from Munich to New York and another one from New York to Bogota. We found a direct correlation between the latitude changes and the cosmic radiation. I think city size plays an important role in our communities because encourage people to analyze data in order to understand the environmental behavior. In the same way, we need to release more data to people and teach them how they can analyze and interpret it. Thanks, SACAS and ICTP to give me the opportunity to share you in 2017 to know new people, new colleagues, and make new friends. Bye. So uh, it worked, I hope. Yes. Excellent. Um, we have we have two more. Would you like to do that at the end, or do you want to sneak another one in? It's good to see. I think let's. Uh, I think let's go for. We'll have one question because I have two questions for everybody on the call. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm going to go for one question, then we'll have a video, and then we can do the last question, and we can end it there. So uh, I'm actually going to spotlight myself so you can see me. It's probably helpful. Um, so thank you so much, um, everybody, for joining. I'll do proper thank yous at the end there. But um, I just want to get uh, the sort of original Safecast team together. Um, they're all in front of you at the moment, or most of them. Um, and I just wanted to have your final thoughts before we go into the next video. Um, just on, uh, you get one line each. I'm going to be mean here to you because I know you guys are chatters. So one line each on your final thoughts of how the event has been for you today. So if I go to um, Peter first. I, One line, I, would, Peter. I would say it's it's been very inspirational. Um, and uh, uh, in, in many ways, we started this 10 years ago as individuals coming together. And today I saw so much inspirational talks where people have taken our, you know, individual thoughts and taken them to the next level. Uh, I, I thought it was just fantastic, and uh, I've been, you know, I, I woke up this morning very early, and, uh, and we have been running around, and I've seen, you know, of course, we've been watching the car driving around, we had a lot of guests, we had all the wonderful discussions that we just went through, and familiar faces and new faces, and I, and, and you know, when we, when I personally started this, there was no other objective, as I think, in a, you know, there's some moments ago we talked about, you know, it's really about your personal personal concerns, but you can broadcast that to 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 many others around you. And I'm not sure why Joe is laughing, but because there's probably sticking something out of my head that shouldn't be sticking out of my head. But uh, <laughs> we'll, okay. we'll get there later. Are you guys are back channeling or what? Thank you so much. I'm going to come to Sean. So, but, I want to think, but also before before we hand over, I just really want to thank, uh, thank Louise and Ian and everybody that have participated you. today in many 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 ways it is extremely amazing what you're doing and also extremely important and i just wanted to share my deep and sincere thanks for everybody what everybody has done today and i'm looking at emu 
uh, in the back there and i'm looking at all the people that we can't see right now uh very very grateful and very very impressed with everybody's contributions and let's keep this going thank you so much fantastic thank you peter for your excellent one-liner um sean hey over to you i'll try to keep my one my one line a little shorter uh <laughs> Um, I think that that the event has just been incredible. I mean, you know, we we have these ideas and we sort of throw them out in the world, but we don't always see what happens with them, you know, and, and we often have our blinders on and, you know, we're focused on the thing that's right in front of us. And an event like this that brings all of those pieces back together and sort of lays out the, the overall scope of everything is just, it's just incredible to behold and, um, and I'm honored to have been a part of it. Thank you ever so much. Um, coming over to the three amigos in Fukushima, we'll go, uh, if I can tackle Asby first, please. Yeah. Um, I got the sense that, you know, we reached out to people and everybody showed up. It was like um, a sense of elevation and the foundations of SafeCast were somehow stronger and taller than they were before. It's just a beautiful sense I had, even as I was slogging through the rain and the mud in you know, coastal Fukushima. It was just a beautiful experience uh, to reach out and, and have so much great response. Lovely, thank you so much. And Emu, at the back there, what was it like for you? It was amazing to see everybody's commitment and I'm really-, really You're a bit quiet, Emu. Can you come closer to the microphone? Uh, it was amazing to see everybody's commitment and uh, I want to thank everybody who has participated and watched the stream. Thank you so much. Uh, and Emma gets a massive shout out for uh, for her translation efforts. I think there was a, an awful lot of translation and uh, thing going on. So thank you. And not, last Let's but not, not forget that Eva was in the car with Joe and Aspie the whole day. Yeah. Our car positions, yeah. in case you didn't notice. He's driving, I'm here. Too. Seriously. <laughs> Chief driver, you managed to get um, those guys uh, through the streets of Fukushima without driving into a ditch through the rain. You didn't um, see the not losing a muffler. Yeah. You didn't see the ditch. <laughs> <laughs> we actually did do some sliding and, and ditch navigating and, and mm -hmm. uh, near the marine house, and it just, be, it just became impassable, and we had to, we had to abort and go back which is what brings me to my line. And my line's gonna be about wet memory. Wet because the rain today, but really about the memories that we keep in our wet you know, uh, processor. And that this is really reminded, you know, all of the things that have gone on in the last 10 years. And for me, especially the drive today was so much reminiscence. You know, going to Jay Village where Peter and I went and saw the, the thing very early on in the project. And, Revisiting the same places and seeing those changes has been, it's still going on. We're gonna, I'm sure we're gonna come back next week and there'll be roads that we can get down this week that we won't be able to and vice versa. Fantastic, thank you so much. Um, before we go on to the video, as, as my co-host for certainly for the round table, Ian, have you got, you're allowed a one line or two <laughs> and then you can hear us for the next video if that's right. And you're on mute. My one liner is I was uh, stunned by the number of people that SafeCast has touched in 10 years and their willingness to come out and spend Saturday uh, during COVID and all the strangeness and that they still want to uh, be involved. And uh, that just shows me the power of the original idea. Fantastic. And what a lovely uh message to move us on to our last video and then when we come back uh, comment. Uh, penultimate 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 comment. sorry i'm going to um, share share now hi everyone i'm dilum pereira from Sri Lanka, a lecturer in the Department of Computer Science, University of Sri Jayawardenepura. I'm engaged in the research in the field of electronics and computer science. The most of the, my research are aligned with embedded systems, design of scientific instrumentation. In 2017, I got an opportunity to participate in the Citizen Science Workshop 
which was jointly organized by the IAEA, ICTP, and SAFCA at Reyes Vehicle. That was a wonderful experience for me. I was able to share my experience and knowledge among the scientists around the world. Through the workshop, I got an hands-on experience to build a Cross Nano Kit and analyze the data collected through it. I shared my gathered knowledge among the university students and it was very interesting event for me. In one of the workshops, there was a participant raise a question regarding the legal support for citizen science projects. That question made me think deeper. I also think that with the proper legal support, it is very easy to go ahead. Furthermore, we can improve the awareness of the citizen science and ongoing projects such as SafeCast could be more informative to the society. Finally, my heart felt great into the 10th anniversary of the SafeCast and my wishes for success of the SafeCast. Thank you. So Anton Christ, I'm sorry, yeah, just it's it's, it's it's my instinct, <laughs> and it's cold in here. So Ian sitting in the world's coldest uh, porter cabin in a gar in a garden at the moment. So uh, hence the big jumper. Okay, uh, so welcome back. This is our last sort of uh, get together and wrap up for the session. So as I promised you, my second question to you is, um, what do you think the next ten years is going to look like for Safecast? What's what's kind of coming up? So if we're going to hold this event in 10 years time, what do you think we'll be talking about and celebrating? Uh, and I'll do it in the same order, but I will be very harsh with the uh, people who extend over their time. Peter. I don't want to be the first. I'll speak. <laughs> Me? Yeah. Oh, well, Sean, you look ready. Sean looks ready. I'm ready. Sure. Sean is waking, you know, I'm, I'm dead. <laughs> I'm dead. I love what Ralph said today about things becoming uh, part of the furniture. And um, I, like, it's like SafeCast, I, I hope and I wish and I, that we can become like an embedded social system, a ubiquitously embedded social system. It's just such a fundamental part of the way people think and behave. And, and, and plan and relate to each other that uh, we don't even have to think about it anymore. Uh, that's a bit abstract, but I really like the idea that it just pervades and, and becomes uh, pretty much ubiquitous, not necessarily us and our devices, but the thinking that we are uh, championing. Great, thank you very much. Um, Sean, can I come to you next? Please? Yeah, I, I, I would like to see more of the sort of viral spread of of all of this right i think over the next 10 years i think we've we've laid a an amazing groundwork we've planted some incredible seeds and my hope would be that those take on lives of their own and and just continue to grow and that in 10 years we're we're sitting around again with our minds blown of of how far this has continued to grow and what new things that we couldn't have possibly imagined have sprouted from those those initial ideas and um i would just like to see that spread continue in ways that we couldn't even imagine right now great thank you um emu i'm gonna make sure you come right to the front because you're okay. you're an equal part of the, the three of you there so come to the front what do you think we'll be talking about um in 10 years time if we were to do this again um, I'm also excited how um, it would uh, extend also to the next generation as we are also doing a lot of involvement with um, young kids. So that's the thing I'm looking forward to that we have newcomers in our rounds who will join our discussion. Thank you so much. Um, and Joe, any thoughts about where we're going to be in 10 years' time? Well, one of the things that's a little bit cynical is I think we're going to be doing the same thing. Maybe there'll be more of us. But if anything, the COVID crisis and even the earthquake in February has shown us that institutions and industry, maybe it won't be the nuclear industry next time, but 
it's not something that somebody planned. It's just a natural human nature of those kinds of organizations to have the missteps in communication and, and things that things are going to happen that are going to need our response or the responses from groups like us 10 years from now, 20, even 30 years from now, we're still going to be dealing with that part of human nature. Thank you so much. Peter, have you had a, a micro nap enough to, to, to think about the question? No, it, it's not about thinking about it. It's just being <laughs> still able able to think after this. No, I, I think what 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 Sean and and Emo and and Asby and Joe were saying, and all the people were saying, I I think how can we create this into a movement, but also into something that becomes not a status quo, not part of the furniture, but basically common, you know, a human right. And we, when we said, you know, we when we started Save Cause, you know, the right to know was one of the things we talked about. And I, I think we actually are, and I agree a little bit with Joe, my fear is, is that 10 years from now, we will not be, not, not made a lot of progress because we lost a lot of ground over the last last couple of years in, in many ways where data has become the afterthought opinion is the first thought and i think we really really hope that we can drive more of these conversations we had today in in a bigger context but also set set themes that you know you know data has become politicized data has become uh, a thing that can be traded data has become whatever but i think in my mind data is a human right and if we can focus on that thought I think 10 years from now, if we have more dialogues around it and hopefully build some new kind of foundations around what we started with that can inspire people to say that, yes, why, can, why can't data be data? I think that would be fantastic. Now, if we will reach that in 10 years from now, you know, I'm an optimist, uh, uh, but I'm not uh, a fantast. So we have to understand that it is a struggle and there's a lot of way to go, but there's also a lot of opportunities for for us to do this, and I think in the early discussion, and sorry, this is not a one-liner. Uh, in the early discussion, you know, we, we talked. To, there was, I think, there was there was a part of discussion where we talked about citizen science, you know, and and is it is you know it, it, is it going to have enough impact? And it has, and and I think yes, it will have impact if we have enough buildup and 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 capacity, and it always starts with one single seed, one single step. Everything you will see in life started with one single element, and that grew. And I and I think when we we talk about these themes, uh, you know, we're we're just starting, and and it is fragile, and we need to create it, and we need to love it, but we need to figure out ways to make it more institutionalized. And and I think we made a tremendous amount of headway. I was very impressed with all the discussions we had, and all the you know all the people that came and everything. Ten years from now, if we can achieve a point where you know, the right to open information around our environment is a human right, I think we would have made a huge, amazing impact. And that would be my dream. I, I add one more, one more tiny footnote onto this whole thing. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, in, in this sort of like looking at the last 10 years, I, I think one unfortunate thing that we've seen is the continued push towards polarization, right, in, in all of this. I think that this event shows the value of bringing in different people from different viewpoints and trying to work together towards some sort of common goal that's that's better, you know, for everyone in a lot of ways. And I think that the trend that we've been seeing so much over the last few years is sort of the the absolute demonization of anybody who isn't a hundred percent on your side. And I wonder if we would have been able to do some of what we did if we would have able been able to have some of the conversations that we had if we were starting this today because of some of those walls that have built, been built in a lot of ways. And I think it's really an important, uh, an important piece of what we've done and what we've tried to do is that, you know, there are some, there are some universal truths in this data and, and in these approaches that regardless of, you know, politics or, or, you know, position or anything, you can sort of find these common things to talk about to try to take steps forward. And, and I think that that's something that uh, I hope we don't lose in the next 10 years. Thank you. That was a really helpful addition. Um, before we go on to our proper thank yous and things, um, I probably have one thing that I'd like to say before I do that. Um, Ian, do you have any thoughts for what this might be look like 10 years from now if we were asked to host a second round table? 
Uh, it's going to seem odd, but I'm far more optimistic, perhaps because I'm not quite as tired as, as the others. Um, uh, I have relatively small children, uh, and they watch. Uh, we we like watching BBC, so that you get the planet Earth sees climate change is coming, and things that are coming that are not going to get hidden. There's going to be uh, a sequence. Uh, every event that doesn't get addressed is going to put pressure on the fact that more of these events need seen. And uh, you've got the loss of habitats, the extinctions. There's, there's, you know, it's not to be depressive, but there's many more things going on. And all of it is in more daylight than it has ever been because everyone can share data and devices. I, I, I avoid some politics, but uh, there is no way the Black Lives Matter movement would have happened without uh, smartphones uh, uh, having cameras on them. And I, I cannot predict um, the change in society. I think to the comment that Ralph made that uh, for his students, it, it's like, well, duh, of course safe class exists. I mean, why wouldn't it? Um, I don't think you put that genie back in the box. Uh, so I think this is a one-way street and there'll be more and more data. And I suspect that with more and more issues, uh, this will become the norm and um, that's almost one line. So I'll, I'll give it to you. I think my, my sort of one comment is probably encapsulates both um, my feelings from today and also um, where I think it's, I'd like to see things being in 10 years. It's probably, um, uh, there's an awful lot of chat that you didn't see if you were watching this on Zoom or on the, um, on the YouTube channel going on between the panelists and the people who are on the Zoom call. And um, uh, that highlighted the tremendous sort of amount of challenges and differences of opinion that we have. And I think it's great that that was able to, to take place sometimes on screen, as it were, and sometimes just in the conversations off screen. And I hope that where those differences of opinions exist, it's great that there's a format to do it. And, and that's where you learn to sort of come to compromise is through being able to have good conversations and, and providing a platform. And hopefully in, in 10 years time, I'd like to think that some of the things which we don't think are currently possible, we can start to, to work a way towards them becoming possible rather than um, seeing this, them as sort of um, intractable problems that we can never overcome. Um, some of the issues around uh, lay, lay and expert science and citizen science versus um, officialdom and exactly where the, the boundaries are between those two and if are you a scientist or are you not a scientist and actually there's been a lot of discussions about people wearing multiple hats and being all of these things at one time or um, perhaps none of them. Um, so I would really like if when we come back when we come back in 10 years time that um, we continue to have some really positive stories about um, how things have moved forward and hopefully we haven't gone back um, and we continue to sort of push the boundaries of, of what we can so with that, I'd like to say a massive thank you to everybody who's on now. Um, and also I'm going to read you, hopefully read the names out. Um, I haven't got the names, apologies for all of our, uh, the ride speakers for which there were many, many, many people that um, uh, Asbi, Emu and uh, Joe visited, but our, um, the round table speakers, Daniel Blumenthal, Peter Bosso, Peter Kucha, Genevieve Beaumont, Michiel van Oudshuizen, Ben Epstein, Sophie Knight, Tanya Perko, Jan Hellebrandt, Astrid Leyland, Ralph Kaiser, Hanel Turkanu, Marco Zanaro, Joka Kennan, Akiba, um, Akiba, <laughs> Nadia Zelenik, uh, Gaston Muskins, Claire Mace, Sandra Mukobache, apologies, I do apologize if I pronounced that incorrectly, I almost certainly did. And finally, um, Sean, you kind of get lobbed on the end there as well, because you've joined us here. And also thank you so much to everybody, certainly for the round table who was um, behind the scenes. So um, Catronel, um, Ian, Mary, Nasby, um, you all did a, an amazing job in kind of corralling all of our various speakers together and making suggestions to, for who we could contact in the first place. So really appreciate that. And I know loads and loads of people were behind the camera um, for Japan, so um, not least Penny and Kelsey, um, uh, I know you guys have basically been up for pretty much 24 hours straight. So um, uh, thank you so much for not being asleep currently. 
Any any other thank yous to say? Again, I well, thank you, Louise, and thank you, Ian. Ian, uh, and again, you know, we started talking about this. I think part of, I mean, just the way the discussion emerged, and it was just a few weeks ago, right? And and we yeah. pulled all this together, and you guys did heavy lifting. You organized this beautiful session uh, in, in a way that I don't think any of us uh, could have. And uh, it's just great that we can, um, you know, these things can happen so independently or interdependently like that. And that's another vision I have for the future. So uh, thank you so much. Big hugs to both of you. Yeah, I, just I, would, wanna, I, I would just like to shout out. out to all the musicians that enlightened yes. our day today. And, uh, and, and I, I truly believe that, that, you know, we all have our passions, but in, in, you know, in a way, you know, all of it comes together. And I really want to thank all the musicians we had today. We had this wonderful, uh, you know, just moments ago, uh, uh, Katrina and, and compositions. Uh, I can tell you that the music that we had from Tokyo, uh, the people that came to play today because of COVID and everything, it meant many, many more things to to everybody playing today than you can imagine. And, um, uh, you know, we had a wonderful moment when Ashton uh, sung Mercy Mercy by Marvin Gaye and he improvised words around radiation in that. If you watch carefully, there were a lot of, you know, there were a lot of uh, kudos and, and, and it really made me, you know, extremely inspired. And I think there were also moments today when we were looking back where you know you you climb a mountain you you always look for the peak but when you look down to the valley you only realize how much you have climbed and we as humans tend to only look at the peak and we don't realize where we are and i think that is kind of the the thought we had but i think the musical elements today the arts the the inspirational parts of what we do are as important as the physical things we do and i just wanted to say thank you for all the people that came today uh, and all the people that you know that have supported us over the last 10 thousands of people have participate in project and I just want to say thank you so much for for doing that but believe in what 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 we stand for continuing continue doing that if it is safe cost or not we uh, we as citizens can do a whole lot more than you can imagine and thanks to Catronel as well for being a key uh, yes help um, persuade and organize uh, so many speakers today and uh, and for, for doing such my pleasure time. and i was very honored to be part of this and okay. i know we had some problems with make a smile but <laughs> if you want to i can we, play it again i got i got i've got i've got rog i've got the last video from argentina okay ready roll yes it. roll it yeah so rodri first so rodri if you're watching it's your turn in the limelight and i know you'll love it here we go roll it Hello everybody and uh, happy anniversary to Sidecast, this great project that started 10 years ago. I'm Rodri from Argentina. Uh, I'm a researcher. I work uh, on environmental awareness systems. I work with uh, air quality, water quality sensors, radiation sensors, uh, weather stations. I started my research uh, back in Argentina on the National Atomic Energy Commission. Then I moved to Italy and I worked for the Wireless Lab Laboratory at the ICTP, International Theoretical Center. Now, now I'm working on uh, the, the National Oceanographic and Seismological Institute here in Trieste, Italy. Uh, a long time ago, like five years ago, we had an excellent workshop in at the ICTP, uh, organized by by the ICTP and the um, uh, Atomic Energy Agency, International Atomic A Agency, uh, here in Italy, where we met the Sedcast group, uh, the team, uh, Joe Asby where we built our Gegi um, and we knew about this amazing project, this crowdsourcing project, which is really amazing. And after this first experience in Italy, where I met a lot of people from different countries, uh, from Latin America, Africa, uh, Asia, 
it was a, a, a really really um, amazing uh, workshop. Then we had another another workshop in in Bariloche in Argentina, where we put one gigi on on a drone and we flew around the national the, the atomic center in Bariloche. Another another great experience. And after that, I, I started to to take my gigi uh, with me when I travel. I mean, I, I took it to different places, but uh, for example, uh, on, on a volcano in Guatemala. But my favorite place uh, is in Argentina. Uh, actually, it's in the border between Argentina and Chile in the north part, where the border is, is, is defined by the, the, the mountains. Uh, and you reach five five thousand uh, meters high, and I took my gegi, and there uh, the the radiation was quite high, so I, I I strongly suggest you to go to the Safecast map and search this place because it's quite 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 amazing. Uh, finally, well, I want to, to thank uh, Joe, Asby, uh, Ian, Marco Senaro, uh, Hermano from the STP, for also, also Akiva, I don't want to forget Akiva, my friend. Uh, and I, I really want to thank you for all the experiences. And I, uh, I wish you all the best for this anniversary. And I hope to see you soon. Bye bye. So, Peter, I really have to say the, those videos have made me smile. Can I thank everyone, all, all the students who did that? They're, they're, they're just great. So, it's nice, so, it's nice, I'll, so nice I'll, to see them. Yeah, let, let's let's see if it works this time because at that time we were dealing with significant complex technical circumstances. It's basically a good excuse for saying we didn't have bandwidth. Um, let me see if we can pull it out again. And uh, uh, the people you saw play this afternoon or, or whatever you were, were very much featured in that video. It was kind of a teaser. And uh, let me see, how did it work again? You share a video, you had to click on these buttons here, this button here, and you had to what? sign a deed, what? and then click on a button here, and then oh. this button here, and then, ah, oh, here it is, okay. Are we ready? Make a smile. Okay, didn't work. Sorry. Um, All right. We're on standby. Didn't work again. Oh, no, didn't it's... work again. Hang it. Hang it. Hang it. Um, donk. Smile.
I've, I've become the host again, yeah, which means I think that Peter has kicked himself out, which I think he probably just needs to reboot himself entirely with a good night's sleep. So on that note, I'm going to ask Sean to say one final word and then we are going to close it, uh, close the event and say thank you so much to everybody who's watching. So Sean, before we say goodbye, hit us yes, with the, it. The one, the one final wrap up is, you know, uh, one thing that we're not very good at <laughs> as we've shown over the last 10 years is, is asking for, for support or money or anything. And, you know, we try to do as much as we possibly can and put out into the world for free, but there's actually a real cost for us on this end to, to produce it all and to keep it going. Um, and so if anybody, you know, finds value in what we're doing or, or thinks it's useful, wants to support it, uh, safecast.org slash donate. Um, every little, little bit that comes in helps pay for servers and gas for the car and, and, you know, videos or anything that we're doing, this equipment, all of this stuff, uh, little bits help a lot. So uh, just, just throwing that out there as well. Thank you so much. In which case, everybody, if you can make it smile, have a wave, and I'm going to end the session. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.